What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 29. Today, I have a special guest. Oh, this is George with approval. I, I gotta learn how to sit like this. So, guys, Kenny Kim, third degree yes. black belt, old school guy, great jiu jitsu. But not, not old, but just old school. Old school, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, Kenny, look him up, guys. Kenny Kim BJJ, at Kenny Kim BJ, mm -hmm. BJJ. So Kenny is has has a program called Matt Made, where he talks yes, at Matt Made on, on Instagram, and I'm gonna let him talk. Um, that talks of not just helps promote jiu jitsu as not just as a as a as an art or sport, but also as a way of life and as a way to help people achieve their goals and also some comfort in through training jiu jitsu. So. Kenny, go ahead. What's up, guys? I'm happy to be here with the Fox, <laughs> the legend here. Man, you know, I was in uh, uh, in Jersey at uh, Tom DeBloss' uh, uh, academy, a of fun seminar. We did a uh, episode, like a docu-series on Tom and who he is. So that's coming out soon. It'll be free on YouTube on Matt Made. Uh, but while I was here, I had to come see my man, uh, the Fox, and I'm uh, happy to be here live with you guys answering these questions. Uh, as we spoke about Matt Made, Matt Made is a, you know, we have a lot of projects going on. One of the projects is, well, the first one is started off as a reality TV show, which we have full six episodes on our YouTube channel. They're free, you guys, so check it out. The last one, actually, Fox made an appearance in Mexico. We had a <laughs> camp there with uh, the Gracies. That's a really good one. It talks about the history of jiu-jitsu and where it's going with guys like Hodger, Igor, all this, all these guys, and even uh, the upcoming guys like Hyman. And so it's, it talks about the triumphs and uh, the, the stories of like um, different people from all walks of life benefiting through jiu-jitsu. Like we always talk about the parallel between the mats and then in life and how jiu-jitsu has helped them off the mats, right? So check it out guys, a lot of good stories. You know, it's, uh, it's fun, it's cultural, it's food, it's travel, it's all that packed into one, right? It's like Anthony Bourdain slash Food Channel slash the uh, the Fight Channel, all that put into one. Anyways, that we're in a talk with the big networks right now, so you guys may even see it on, I don't know, one of the networks. That'd be amazing. Yes. Not only for us, but uh, for all jiu-jitsu practitioners, the gems, the students, and for the overall popularity of, you know, jiu-jitsu, right? So... Uh, check that out. We also have an Instagram page, Matt Made Show, uh, Matt Made underscore Show, and this one is more of a short stories of people coming on talking about their stories, personal stories, and they're about thirty seconds to a minute. There's some that are on there that'll give you goosebumps and give yeah. you tears. So make sure you guys check that out. And if you want to tell your own story, you guys can go to mattmade.com and actually share your own story at the comfort of your home with your phone. I'll I'll take you through the steps. You record it. You push send. My team gets it, they chop it up, make it look good, and make it look pretty, and you are just set to go. So, anyways, that's enough of me and the show. Let's get on with it. Now, back to you guys. So, guys, start to check in, start to ask questions. You got two brains here instead of one. Well, I don't mean, I don't mean that, John. I know <laughs> <laughs> you will involved into the next brain. So, guys, we, as, as, as always, the um, live questions get top priority, but we always start with with the questions to get things started, to give you guys a chance to start asking questions. So at the end of last episode, people start to ask about Japanese necktie. So um, I'm gonna have Kenny do it to me, and then I'm gonna do it to Kenny, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what, what it means. Uh, if you wanna ask more specific questions about it, go ahead, start asking. Otherwise, we're just gonna run with it the way we see fit. So, so. all right. So the Japanese necktie. Just to be clear, I'm not the biggest fan. I know Fox and I talked about this. I'm not the biggest fan of the Japanese necktie, but I'm gonna give you guys my take on it. So it usually, whether the arm is, uh, has, has the underhook or not, you can both do it, right? So usually maybe I'm going for the darts here. As I'm going for the darts, one of the ways for him to defend it is to keep his head straight and not let me get it, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my hands in, shift my weight down, right? Now I wanna hover my chest over to the back of his chest. Boom. Now sit to the side. It's already locked up. If you want to get extra leverage, I step in and hook the leg, and boom, I have the finish from this position. Okay, so I usually do it from the failed Darson test whenever the guy posts out. All right? So 
yeah. might go from a different angle. Right, so we're here, we're going for the darts here. He starts to straighten it out. I want to make this that's grip here. I hover over, hook the leg, and get the finish from this position. Nice. How you enjoy me getting choked? <laughs> that's a special treat. You know that. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna. Yes, we talked about it. So guys, this is not part of my game as well, and the reason for that is. Uh, when I have someone underneath me, kind of a deep half guard position, I tend to go more. So, so I tend to go more over the head as opposed to under. I believe that gives me a little bit better control. We could talk about it unless you guys have other questions. But um, the question was specifically about Japanese necktie. So again, if 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 I can if I can reach to my bicep, I will lock up the doors. But if you can, if I cannot, we're gonna go. Bolt cutter grip. I'm gonna push his head in. I'm gonna sit to the side. And a lot of times this is it. But if you want a little bit more leverage, you're gonna go for the leg and get the finish. So again, um, I don't use this a whole lot. I tend to wrap the head over like a guillotine style um, or anaconda, which naturally flows into anaconda finishes, more so than the Japanese necktie. That said, I believe it is a valuable tool, especially again, so sometimes you're passing half guard, you sort of, you, you hear, you can't quite get the, get the darts connection, so you just basically drop to your side and start applying the pressure. This, guys, leads me to sort of another topic, and I'm gonna use that to kind of segue into the topic, because I, I, I like to always not just talk about specific techniques, but more, Importantly, sort of concepts and uh, and sort of philosophies because that helps you understand why we're doing certain things and what are some of the things benefits versus disadvantages. That's especially for the higher level guys, it's more important than sort of just seeing the technique. Um, one of the things I want to talk about in this episode is sort of the underrated aspect of choking with your chest. A lot of times when we choke, and, and it, this comes in in, in, this, in the Japanese necktie, it comes in uh, darses, it comes in anacondas. Um, I a lot of times use it uh, in a single-handed guillotine. Um, but the chest aspect is extremely big. So a lot of times when you have an arm connection, people tend, same thing with the guillotines, people tend to focus on their arms and not really about choking with their chest. Choking with your chest is such an underrated aspect of choking. Let's make sure that we don't get criticized. We mean, we mean constriction. And choking is the common term. When you, when you choke, even rear naked choke, guys, a lot of times people focus on the arm, the arms burn out. No, usually what constriction or choking is, is really at, at, at the highest level is making a structure that is strong enough and then applying that final pressure with your chest. Guys, I cannot emphasize how important that is, where you basically, what you're doing is, is when, I, when I lock up a choke, uh, I'm, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna demonstrate the one hand to give to you. But what I'm doing is when I wrap it, when I get to the final point, I don't just squeeze with my hand, it's not enough. I sort of puff out my chest, so, you can, I, was, I look at this, guys. So when I choke, it's this. This is what gets that last 10%, and that's the difference between, so a lot of times if, if, if I'm on top, right, and I wind up with one-handed one -handed guillotine. So a lot of people finish like this. This is not a very good finish. It causes a lot of pain, but it's not a constriction. What I do is make sure that I use my chest and cause compression. That's the way I do one-handed guillotine, but again, it comes back to sort of the principle of almost all chokes, all constrictions involved. Don't forget to use your chest, guys. Do not just use your hands uh, or your arms because they have a tendency to burn out, number one. And number two is it's not the tightest choke. So a lot, of, same thing with the guillotine. I roll my shoulder forward and my chest kind of you have to learn to breathe through your diaphragm because you don't want to be huffing and puffing and your chest expands because every time 
choking somebody. And when, when you allow that much uh, sort of uh, pressure alleviation, pressure down, pressure off, people start, their blood starts to pump, they start to get confidence, they wind up escaping. Just everything needs to be tight, steady pressure. Anyways, do we, ha we have a question? Yes. Can I add to this? Yes, so I always say, when I'm teaching, I always say, the easiest way to think about a choke is, you just want to take away any space that there is, right? So let's say I have a gi thing, even a rear naked choke. The neck is right here. Me just squeezing here, yeah, you, I mean, I mean, I can. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, can, I can't. Uh, wait, 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 wait. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's there, Fox. But, uh, it's there. Even in this case here, if I can, like Fox was saying, if I can puff out my chest and take away the space between here and here, the choke is already on. Whether it's a guillotine, whether it's a rear naked choke, darts, anything. Same thing with the darts. I mean, if I'm here, instead of just squeezing here, what am I doing? I'm putting my weight and I'm having my chest all the way over. So, easiest way to remember finishing the choke is take away the space. Yeah, whether it's, sometimes it's, most most of the times it's with the chest, yeah. but sometimes it could be your hips. Yeah. If you can take away the space, your choke's gonna be 100 times more effective than it is just squeezing it, right? Absolutely. What so, do we got? So if we can have a different angle, just to see kind of what your feet are doing while, during the Japanese necktie. Okay, uh, uh, this one, this one, yeah. I'm doing it, yeah. All right, so, so a lot of times, uh, you can apply this. Actually, one of the good good places to apply it from is is from half guard. So I don't necessarily have to pass half guard. Um, so as I'm pushing um, Kenny's head, I just want to make sure I push it out of the way where my body winds up on the, this on, on top of his head or on the side. So this, you, when you pull somebody in, you're actually uh, curling them up and you're pushing that their head deeper into the choke. So you can be bottom leg, you can be the top leg, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you can even be no leg. So again, this time I was puffing out sort of the middle part of my torso. Uh, I don't arch, don't mistake that with an arch. It's basically puffing out that always thinks uh, sort of the difference between being some, something good, good enough and excellent is a lot of times it's just that last 10%. So the, the leg positioning should not matter as much as how you basically use your whole body to, to, uh, to put the choke on. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, regarding any higher percentage side control submissions that you would recommend? Ooh, that's, so I have one and... Uh, they had a specific one if the okay. paper cutter in Nogi. Mm. In Nogi? Yeah. No. Baseball bat. So there you go. Baseball, Baseball bat. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, so guys, again, I'm kind of going back to, to, to the concept. So again, watch how I do it. Uh, the reason for that is when I love the baseball bat choke. Um, but, and I use the no gi version of it, even with the gi, because I feel I better control, because a lot of times when, when you put your knee on the belly on somebody, their head comes up and the, the gi kind of flares out. So you usually have the space to get there. But pay attention to how, what I do. So I put my knee on the belly, I hit it, I take my knee off the belly and I put, so rather than kind of cranking, I put my elbow directly under my chest. I could literally be here for 15 minutes because the compression, I'm using gravity, I'm using my chest to push down as opposed to squeezing with my arms. All right, so this is one of my favorite and, and the reality is, is it, a lot of times, this the threat of that, guys that train with me a lot, so they start to avoid, they start to look, look away, they start to turn away. And this now allows me access to their back. But basically, when I'm, especially when I am have the knee on the belly, and I don't go, he, uh, I don't go sort of the, the traditional knee on the belly. This is good for scoring points, or if I'm gonna uh, light Kenny up, this is better bringing my knee down. I don't carry, it's not as much weight, but I'm in a better angle to start to, to attack. I go under connect my hands, bring my elbow under my chest, and then the compression is only with my chest rather than pulling with my arms. A lot of people tend to do it like this, which kind of sucks. It's, I'm almost doing like an amateur chiropractic adjustment on Kenny, and, but this, this one is gonna be hard for people to, uh, to tap, but this, I can hold literally for 10 minutes, no burnout. So this is probably my favorite top side controller. What would you say, Kenny? 
You know, for me, I go all the way back to um, the Americana. So let me park it this way. So how did you go here? Perfect. So side control is not my favorite. I'm, I'm, I'm a smaller guy, but I'm very mobile. I yeah. can make you be on belly. I can go to the mountain. I can... But what I like to do is once I get to side control, I always like to have this shoulder pressure right here, right? I, you know, shoulder adjusters, whatever you want to call it. I want to make sure that I'm making them look this way. And a lot of times here, um, you see how I popped his hands on my hips already? A lot of times the guy's going to want to use this kind of push my hips up. When he does it, just go to switch my hips. My hips are switched, and I'm going to start to kill. Now I have two on one to fight with. And then from here... I can even come in, use my head if I want to, and start to finish the Americana, right? So my thing is, I always like to isolate one arm. If I can isolate one arm, whether it's on the near side or the far side, now I have two on one attack, whether it's an Americana, a Kimura. And <clears throat> it's also very effective because if I miss it, I'm still on top. Yeah. I don't lose the position. I don't do anything funky, right? And so I, I, I take the risk of like losing my position, right? So I want to keep the top position. I'm there. I go for some missions that's going to allow me to finish. But if I don't get it, I stay on top position. Guys, it's a very important uh, concept. If you're on top, so you, you know my going. If I'm on the bottom, my job is to either sweep or submit. When I'm on top, if it fails, you should be able to stay on top. So again, don't go for crazy, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> bare ball yeah, roll yeah. from the top. You are on top. Why would you take such a risk where you wind up on the bottom? You always, everything you do in jiu-jitsu is a constant risk-return calculation. You should not, if you're in a good position, you should not take big risks. Unless you're down on points and, you know, then let it fly. What else we got? Now, switching position, you're asking about, as a person on the bottom of half guard who doesn't want to be there, how do I deal with when the top player switches the hips to pass? Switching angles oh, yeah, a yeah, lot I of it. I know. So, so basically, uh, so he, he, yeah, yeah. This is so. Uh, you're totally exactly that. Nothing that I'm doing. <laughs> 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 it's totally exact. So I had a guy, uh, uh, um, a black belt actually, or uh, yeah, yesterday at when well, I was teaching the seminar yeah. at Tom's, and where I was teaching half guard out passes. And I went up to the person switches their hips, and I the first thing <laughs> I was like, I just did this. I was like, here. She's like, what is that? Oh, I'm like, that's a hook. Oh, look at half butterfly. I'm like, yes. So, guys, now you know my kidneys, kidneys of this program, Great Mind State of Life. Yeah. So, so, did I start so, as soon as, you know, as, I'm already looking for this. This, not, I'm going to actually lift, I'm going to start to try to attack the back. Now, let's assume that you miss the, you miss the hook. You have a possibility. Guys, my, my back is a little bit on the fritz, so there's a 50-50 chance that I'll start boning halfway through this, hopefully not. So I prop myself up, I brace myself against Kenny's lower back, and I just slip out. That's the other possibility. This one's a lot harder to do. You really need to shoot out. But generally speaking, anytime I feel the guy's switching the hips, I'm looking for that, for that hook and start lifting. Uh, one thing is more of a prevention for me. So if I'm here, and uh, Fox switches the hips right here, this way. I switch my hips back the other way, here. And now look at my hands. I'm here. I want him to pass from here. If Fox passes, I'm already coming out. I'm going to take it back. And I have, no cho I have no choice. I have to, right. I have to abandon the, right. the, the passing effort. The two on one under the armpit when his back's turned towards me, that's it. It's, it's pretty much done deal from there. So. I'm kind of giving up the pass, but I know where I am as far as the position goes, so I can use that frame. Notice my arm is straight yeah. out. Complete frames. So, yeah. uh, you know, with, with, with half guard, um, anytime you're on the bottom, I think uh, you gotta look for the guys. Anytime somebody puts up that leg, there's a chance to do something with it. Um, again, um, let me try to show that one other one, if, if we can, so. Uh, let's see. So again, if, if he starts to switch his hips, if I can brace myself, this is probably the number one. But if I can brace myself and slide out, 
there's a chance you're going to wind up on the back or yes to then the effort. But again, I usually look for, if somebody's in a dominant position, I look for them to make a big movement and try to take advantage of that to escape. We're running out of time, guys. We probably have a couple, a couple more minutes if you have any last minute questions. Again, uh, Kenny's based in Atlanta, so uh, you know you can look him up on Instagram. Probably uh, Instagram is better yep. place. Best, best, best place. Kenny can be dated. We did say have a lot of hellos from Japan, Vermont, all over the place. Um, nice. For episode thirty, please like, share, subscribe, share with your friends because if you help them get better, guess what? They're gonna push you to become better. Yeah.